so just to quickly introduce myself, um, so I'm Benedict Macon Cooney. Um, I'm Deputy Executive Director of Technology and Public Policy at the Tony Blair Institute. Uh, prizes for anyone that remembers all of that later on. Um, but really, why I'm here is because we run a global health tech program uh, and are really focused on modernizing healthcare delivery around the world. Um, I'll say a little bit more about that in a bit, but um, I also want to thank everyone who is here. Um, I mean, as I said, it's an incredible cast list, and I really do think this is something that could turn into something much, much bigger in the long run. Um, and I also want to reiterate a couple of points that people have made, um, which is that this is, uh, you know, one of those days I think it's what you bring your whole self to, and, uh, and it's going to be a very immersive experience. And I'm going to hold my hand up as, uh, you know, you might guess by my accent, I'm British. And we're not renowned for being particularly expressive. So uh, if you see me immersing, you all better be too, because uh, <laughs> I'm making a, you know, some sacrifices there. So uh, second, um, my thanks really do go to Stanford. And um, I should just say a few words on how we got here, really. Um, you know, in the early days of the pandemic, um, where I think everyone was sort of scrambling around for new solutions, um, we decided to pivot the whole of our organization really to responding to COVID. And, you know, I think like many sort of just reading late into the night, trying to find out what we can do. I stumbled across a piece uh, in Wired uh, about Mike's work and wearables. Um, and it immediately sort of struck me as this is the type of innovation and disruption that we need, both for actually you know, solving for this immediate crisis, but in the longer term in healthcare. And you know, I reached out to Mike. Mike responded. He sat on, I remember, a Zoom call with me, Tony, Ben, and a few others to talk through what we might be able to do. And I guess the sort of the long story short is we're still talking. So um, <laughs> I think it's going all right. But um, one of the things I loved about Mike and the team's work is that you know, not only do they have this deep expertise, but they're able to explain things in incredibly clear and actionable ways. Um, you know, they are both sort of disruptive and innovative, but it's it makes it easy for people like me, you know, do not come from a civil background to understand. Um, and I also, you know, I should say that uh, Mike really does practice what he preaches. Uh, last night when I first saw him, he said to me, are you still naked? Uh, and, you know, com coming from someone else, I might have, uh, you know, been a bit sort of uh, taken aback. But what he meant was uh, I'm still not wearing any wearables. Uh, and as you might see, he has a few adorning his wrists. So, uh Yes, I am, by Mike's definition, naked. I apologize for that. Um, but so as we then sort of talked to more of the teams and we sort of worked out where how sort of the unique expertise that both they bring from the scientific and research perspective, we come from politics and policy, you know, and he, you know, thinking about both the COVID response and beyond, we thought, well, this is actually desperately what we need in the world today. Um, for too, too often, people in you know, politics don't speak to people working in research and technology, and we've shown through elements like the mRNA vaccine what happens when you actually collectively come together to try and solve for issues. And you know, I hope that we can do that outside of crisis state because there are you know a whole raft of issues that we need to solve for, and we need those kind of coalitions. Um, so that's what brings us here today. Um, and I mean, I think there's a lot of people that know this field a lot better than me, and I'm coming in as someone who's learning a lot as well, but. You know, if you look at sort of the statistics, the mental health challenge around the world is, you know, stark. You know, in the UK, um, you know, there are 1.4 million people waiting to receive mental health care in our health service. In Africa, where we advise a lot of the governments uh, uh, in our work, um, countries only have 1.4 mental health professionals per 100,000 people. Um, you know, the global average is nine, which is still not actually that high, but I mean, it's just, you know, phenomenal. Um, and, you know, in emerging economies elsewhere around the world, only 1% of overall health spending goes on mental health care. Um, so, you know, I think there's a lot that we need to do to change that. Um, so I know that in the US, Tom Insel has said billions of dollars of research uh, into better understanding the brain has not led to better patient outcomes. Um, and this means that we really do need new novel approaches like the one that Mike was talking about with disruption. Um, so it really does mean that we need to bring together those coalitions that I talked about. Um, you know, some of the experts will speak to more of the solutions today, but you know, the reason for our interest in this is simple. You know, we work with governments on modernizing healthcare. You know, mental health is essential to this. Thanks to the technological innovation, we have new solutions coming on. But I do also agree with James's point that structural issues and other societal challenges that have to be part of this as the solution. Um, and so, you know, sort of, you know, state 
what our role is going to be in this going forward. And I hope that, you know, there'll be lots of sort of calls to action. Like we're going to develop politically actionable policy. Um, Jess and Lauren, who are in the room, are going to be publishing a white paper later in the fall. And I think they would love to probably build some new connections with lots of people here who can feed into that work and it will make it better for it. Um, and then we will want to work with more researchers and innovators to implement the ideas that we think are important to all of our future. So, yeah, we think it's a critical challenge. And um, so we hope you join us in that mission. So um, I really do look forward to sort of meeting all of you and building some of those connections to build those newer coalitions like the one that we built with Stanford, because I think it's important to how we revolutionize healthcare. And so with that in mind, um, I'm delighted to say that we have already someone who's leading the charge with this grad, uh, like to, uh, Dr. Diana Ramos, uh, California's Surgeon General, um, who was recently appointed by Governor Newsom this year. Uh, in this unique role, she advises the governor on how best to address public health risks and challenges as effectively and early as possible. Uh, Dr. Ramos is an expert in public health, reproductive health, and health tech. Um, and she serves as the public health administrator at the California Department of Public Health Center for Healthy Communities. Uh, she's also served on the faculty of the University of Southern California's Keck School of Medicine since 1999. And if she needs any more accolades, this is uh, she is also the per day and physician at Kaiser, the founder and CEO of Gamify Health, uh, and holds many other posts. Wow. Um, it sort of puts um, me to shame. So welcome. It's an honor to have you with us. And please. Help. Thank you so much.